Hi guys, welcome to the video. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about cravings and give you six or seven little strategies to try and overcome them. So as humans, we eat for a lot of reasons and more than just hunger. One of those is boredom and cravings often appear when we're bored. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, how to identify a craving versus hunger and then we can get into some tips on how to um, solve them basically. So if you're really hungry, your hunger will come on gradually and build until you have a meal time. It will be regular around a certain period of the day where you usually eat and when you do eat, you'll be satisfied. However, cravings are completely different. They often come on suddenly and randomly and often eating doesn't um, solve the problem. Sort of while you're eating, you are satisfied. However, as soon as you've finished eating, you're not, you want more. And the reason is you're eating for the wrong reasons, because you're bored and not because you're hungry. So yeah, while you're eating, you're not bored anymore, but as soon as you've finished eating, you're still bored. So we have to look at it in that kind of way to um, solve the problem sometimes as well. So often cravings are habits that we build. So we might eat something at a certain time of day, a certain place or a certain situation. And then we kind of associate those two things together. And so, say for example, we've had lunch and we eat something sweet afterwards. We get used to eating something sweet after. So eating lunch triggers that kind of craving for something sweet after. And it's not just because you've eaten lunch you need something sweet. It's because of the situation you've kind of built the habit of association between lunch and eating something sweet. So um, that's just one example. You might um, have a habit of eating in front of the TV. So um, your habit might be eating in that certain place on the sofa while watching TV at a certain time of day. And all those associations go together and make you crave the food at that certain time. So understanding that it's just a habit and that you don't need the food is quite important. It doesn't make it any more easy, but just the fact that you know it's uh, for that reason. So going on to the tips, number one, I'd say just make sure you're hydrated because sometimes thirst can be mistaken for hunger or even cravings as well. So drinking that water can just eliminate that problem. And also water keeps the stomach full and um, helps reduce hunger pangs and cravings as well. So it's a good one when you're on a diet just to make sure you do get enough water. So number two is to chew some gum. So gum, obviously you're chewing something. So if you do want to eat, it kind of mimics that the chewing without any calories, gives you some flavor. And also it stops you uh, being able to put things in your mouth. So say someone offered you something, it gives you number one, a reason to say, no, sorry, I've got some gum in my mouth. Or number two, it's just an effort to take it out. And often the flavor of mint as well, ruins the flavor of sweet things. So um, that's a really good one to um, stop cravings and even sort of resist um, having foods as well. Number three is to have a zero calorie fizzy drink. So. This will satisfy a sweet craving without any calories. So obviously there's loads out there. You've got um, Coke Zero, Diet Coke, you've got lemonade versions, orange versions. You can even make your own by buying lemonade and putting flavors in that as well. So the next one is just to make it difficult to have that food that you don't really want to have. So if you find yourself going for the chocolate or the cakes, hide them away or even don't buy them. If you have it in your house, it's easier to have. If you um, don't buy them in the first place, you can't have it. Um, but yeah, make it as difficult as possible. Even say, like if you have a box, you can lock them in and put the key somewhere. So you have to actually go and put effort into finding the key. It sounds silly, but it works for some people. So the next one is to break the habit. So for example, we've associated sitting on the sofa with eating chocolate. So that association we want to now break. So what we can do, we can implement some strategies to help that. So for example, number one, we can modify what we um, are having instead of chocolate for something different, lower calorie or not as desirable. So we kind of form a new habit of what we eat. Number two, we can try and disassociate completely sitting on the sofa and um, eating something. So it's kind of a scale. You kind of, yeah, change it for something less calorific um, and then try and reduce it to nothing. And we can do that by implementing those other strategies that I've previously mentioned, like gum, water, uh, making it more difficult to get access to what you want to eat. The next one is kind of similar to making it difficult, 
but it goes a bit further. So we kind of want to make a barrier to eating that certain thing. So say it was chocolate and just create a rule around it. So say that you find yourself eating chocolate when you are in front of the TV. Create a rule that disassociates that and makes it more difficult, but also something that you might not want to do, but at the same time, it's kind of a positive thing. So if you, um, yeah, like I just said, sit in front of the TV and eat chocolate, maybe you can say, yes, I can have the chocolate, but if I go for a, a walk around the block and then I can have the chocolate. So that kind of makes you think, do I really want to do that enough to have the chocolate? So I can have it, but I have to do that lap around the, around the block. And that kind of, yeah, gets you out active, gives you some movement and exercise, and still gives you that treat as well. And probably finally, just to address the fact, are you bored? Is that the reason you want to eat? Have you associated eating with the fact that, yeah, it can stop you being bored for a little while? And maybe you need something new, something more positive to stop you being bored, something that helps, actually helps you with your diet and actually helps you um, achieve some um, weight loss results rather than using the food as the um, anti-boredom thing, which is only a temporary thing. Um, unless you eat all the time, which obviously is not gonna help with any weight loss. And just a little extra actually, which probably help, if you don't know whether you're hungry or you're craving something, there's a little test you can do. Ask yourself, would you eat some broccoli now? And if you say yes, it's probably hunger. If you say no, I want chocolate, I want cake, that's probably craving because you're always gonna go for sweeter and nicer things when you're craving. And when you're hungry, you'll go for anything really, even if it is broccoli, even if it is something a bit blander because you wanna actually satisfy that hunger. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, share, like, and comment, and I will see you in the next one. So I often think of extra tips to give you after I do these videos, and this is one of them. So fasting, fasting is an excellent way to tune into your real hunger signals. So with fasting, you're obviously going without eating for a little while. So you experience the full hunger kind of uh, roller coaster. So people think that when you stop eating, or when you don't eat for a while, the hunger goes up, 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 and sort of you die. Um, whereas in reality, it goes up, 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 hits a peak, and then comes back down, whether you eat or not. And we often condition ourselves to eat something as soon as we, as soon as we feel that kind of, this tiny little bit of hunger. And Fasting helps you tune into the real hunger experience and feel the full hunger um, yeah, experience, I guess. So you condition yourself to actually accept the fact that you can feel hungry and not necessarily eat straight away. This helps you um, stop craving things as soon as you start feeling that tiny little bit of hunger in your stomach. But it also helps you realise that you don't necessarily need to keep eating all the time and you can have gaps between meals where you do feel empty because conditioning yourself to always feel full is not necessarily a good thing. So fasting, yeah, it's good for um, weight loss in terms of um, controlling your calories, but also this tuning into hunger signals, which is a really, really strong thing um, that can help you basically deal better with hunger and get better success on your diet because you are realigning in your brain just how you just think about and accept and believe about hunger and just creating that new habit basically.